Huawei did it again, releasing a reasonably priced sports-oriented smartwatch with catchy design, almost matching Apple Watch series, but different enough about software to be among the best. Or not? Let's inspect! Okay, here's the deal. Last year I made the decision to stop reviewing Huawei made smartwatches because of various reasons I don't want to talk about right now. But a few weeks ago I made an exception and published a review of the Huawei Band Generation 9. And ever since I have received so many requests to review the Huawei Watch Fit Generation 3 that here it is. And in the end of the day, on this channel, I've always prioritized technology so that it really matters and uh, personal biases, opinions and political stuff, I'll keep more to the background. So yeah, based on all of these requests, I made the decision to get the Huawei Watch Fit Generation 3 and uh, make a thorough review exposing all the strong and the weak sides, figuring out whether that's a really good and great smartwatch of 2024, whether I regret my decision or not. You gotta watch this. A $160 starting price is already considered to be a very good one, especially if behind the price tag there's good engineering and beautiful design. Huawei Watch Fit 3 seems to deliver a combination of both, threatening not only the Watch GT series, but also most members of Amazfit's lineup, the Garmin and Fitbit's offerings, why not even the already mentioned Apple Watch series. In terms of unboxing, Watch Fit 3 certainly delivers. Huawei are good about their branding, they've always had their own kind of elegance, and this is something you will immediately notice with this watch as well. Shapes are clearly not too different from what a current generation of Apple Watch series look like. Still, some little touches here and there to give the Fit 3 some sort of uniqueness. But nah, I can't say I'm a fan of what they did here, because a company of their scale could have come up with a good alternative design. There's a crown button for doing most of what you do with the watch, another smaller button, which is configurable, and of course, a very capable and vibrant display, which responds to touches. A good strap, and this finally is a big difference to the Apple Watch series, removable, of course, bunch of sensors on the back, and some quite unique and interesting specs. There's a Huawei-developed system on a chip, 4GB of flash, a 1.82-inch display, aluminium alloy case, 9-axis IMU, optical heart rate sensor, an ambient light sensor, 5 ATM water resistance, Bluetooth 5.2, a very slim and lightweight design, and it communicates to your smartphone via Huawei Health. So the specs, well, most of them they actually sound good. It's very typical for Huawei not to announce the exact system on a chip which is inside, but presumably the kind of processor backing this smartwatch is very similar to what we have inside the Huawei Watch GT series. I think performance is alright. Nothing to do with the true smartwatch performance of uh, the Snapdragon series or whatever is powering the Apple Watch series, though. In terms of display, this here is stunning, has close to 1500 nits peak brightness, which means it's almost on par with what Samsung are deploying in their Galaxy Watch series, and this is fantastic. In terms of design, well, that's an Apple Watch 9 ripoff. Kind of weird decision. Um, on the other hand, there are certain tiny refinements, such as this rotating crown, which looks very similar to the rotating crown of the Apple Watch 9. However, it's slightly bigger or maybe just half of a centimeter higher than that on the bezel, so that it feels a lot more functional. And I can say only good things about the implementation of the crown with the Watch Fit Generation 3. In terms of battery, we count on a 400 milliamp hour battery, which is a bit more than what is deployed inside the Apple Watch series. But more interestingly, in here, the operating system is based on RTOS, and that's a very lightweight Linux-based distribution. It is famous for spectacular battery life, but a bit hindered in terms of smartness and the ability to deploy some additional software and apps. And on top, Huawei have made sure to put their typical skin called Harmony OS. And speaking of the operating system, it's good to explore all the apps, figure out how accurate or not are the health tracking features. 
and talk more about the software. The system navigation feels familiar if you have ever owned a smartwatch in the last few years. Huawei even proposed a tutorial at the start, but it's just about reading. The crown button acts as a home button and app launcher. There are two views that you can switch between. I've more often used the list view, but the default look is quite functional as well. The second button opens the workouts by default. Truth is that I was expecting somewhat more over here. Concerning the workouts that are performed indoors, I feel that you're going to receive better than the average statistics, because Huawei used their 9-axis IMU sensor, including a 3-axis gyroscope, a 3-axis accelerometer and a 3-axis magnetometer. Chinese makers are traditionally including more than 100 different types of workouts, which is meant to be a big advantage as compared to the likes of Garmin, Fitbit and similar, but important ones, such as e-bike riding, are still missing here, and even though the integration with Strava is present, it may flag some activities being with wrong category, and you're gonna have to manually fix this. So, no, the workout list is not that great yet. On the other hand, running and walking have quite a few variations, and you can even follow some of the good courses to improve your stamina. The big surprise here, and it is a good one, it is the GPS performance. It's almost perfect. While Amazfit advertise their polarized antennas, Huawei just say nothing and their GPS still does a great job. Quickly acquires the signal, accurately traces your movements, almost no mistakes about the routes. Oh, speaking about routes, importing GPS tracks is supported and very easy to be uploaded via the Huawei Health app. So, no, there's no Google Maps or such, but if you have your training route or just use Google Maps to get it downloaded, you can still count on some sort of navigation. Among the apps that seem to be new in the list is the Stay Fit app. It is something like a weight loss coach or such that improves the stamina, and the app helps you achieving these goals by reminding about basic and easy to follow tasks each and every day. You have, of course, excellent heart rate information based on what the sensor pulls on a 24 7 basis or whatever you configure it to do. Pretty sure you're gonna ask about accuracy. I feel that the HR tracking is very, very good, especially knowing that it takes the measurements from the wrist. Also, you can connect to an external HR sensor, such as the Polar H10. Only Bluetooth protocol is supported here, which covers a fair amount of devices, and if you wonder how a workout would look like with the external chest tracker connected, here is an example. You can pull information about blood oxygen saturation too, and results are matching what my pulse oximeter detects when measuring. As you know, I'm very demanding about sleep tracking, and not only WatchFit 3 delivers, it is among the devices with most accurate and most detailed sleep statistics I've ever seen to date. A few years ago, Huawei have been among the first to include some advanced analysis and advices, and now they continue to lead with fantastic grouping and even more depth of the presented data. Stress, breathing exercises, the new health clovers, you're well set for receiving this information the way you like it. There also are some good productivity apps. Finally, a calendar implementation. This was missing with generations 1 and 2. A compass, a flashlight, timers, a stopwatch. It's all there. Well, no calculator, but wait, you can actually add some third-party apps and a calculator is among these. Very limited amount of such, though. I wish there's a remote for GoPro, like the one that Amazfit smartwatches provide. Based on all these many functions, if you have any concerns about the battery endurance, then don't. Huawei save 4 days with always on display and all tracking features on, I got close to 6 full days in this mode. If you go without always on display, I feel that we talk about weeks of work. Crazy good! And the fast charging? puts to shame most of the smartwatches these days. As for Huawei Health, this is the smartphone app, the biggest drawback is that it continues to not be available on Google Play Store. It is present in App Store and the App Gallery, though, just keep in mind that some of the functions might not be available for iPhones. The app is great, shows loads of good information in a very understandable way and continues to be my personal favorite about overall good UX. 
As mentioned, it can link to Strava and a few other data services and is the right place to choose one of the not so many available good watch faces. It is a bit weird for Huawei's standards, but for this particular model, I'm rather disappointed about the availability of good free watch faces. If you're ready to pay, then there are some good ones available. Firmer updates are to be expected as well, and remember that Huawei maintains software support for many years, likely more than any other smartwatch maker at the moment. So, does this top performer have any drawbacks after all? Absolutely! But there's just one that is really critical – the inability to make contactless payments. It's good to know that the straps are proprietary, which limits you into buying originals because of quality concerns, the lack of unique style and design, and the lack of support for certain trendy workout types. That's what I don't like. So, no, I do not regret my decision to review this smartwatch. Probably quite the opposite, because the more I analyze, the more I think about it, the more I experience with uh, Watch Fit 3, the more I feel that Huawei made too many things right. And uh, no, it is not as capable as an Apple Watch or a true Android-based smartwatch, such as the uh, Galaxy Watch series or the OnePlus Watch 2, because it doesn't have an AI assistant, uh, it doesn't have the ability to install additional apps or do some other smartphone-like tasks. But, well, you can do quite many other things, like the health tracking is so much better you can respond to notifications, you can take some Bluetooth-related phone calls. When it comes to the overall health tracking implementation, it is superb. And overall, it probably can cover 70 to 80% of what a true smartwatch can do, meaning that it is a very functional alternative to the Apple Watch series. And furthermore, better price and ability to work with both iPhones and Android devices. So uh, I think, yeah. Huawei did it again. Spectacular, extremely capable smartwatch with somewhat weird design and not weird because it looks bad, it's just because it's a ripoff, which is not exactly fair. But if we think about it, it's probably the finest 2024 fitness oriented smartwatch with focus on great battery life that costs less than $200. At least that's my opinion, and I'm eager to hear about yours comment section down below the video. Thank you very much for watching this episode on the channel. If you want more, then subscribe and if you want to help me, become a channel member, be part of this journey to explore more cool tech. Thanks very much for watching, I'm the Tech Mishka, can't wait to see you in the next episode, bye!